this is Lori Radis with 12 Paw Designs and this week we are going to be doing a doormat. So the things that you're going to need is a doormat. I got mine from Home Depot. Some people do Ikea, whichever one works for you. You need some freezer paper, press and seal, and then colors of your choice. And I actually got these outdoor acrylic paints from Michaels. So they're fairly inexpensive and I got a bunch of colors because I wasn't sure what I wanted to do. Um, but just grab your paints and grab your items and go from there. You'll need a brush. And then once you have everything, you're going to take your freezer paper and I set this up to be 12 by 24. So I'm just going to take a piece of my freezer paper, line it up on my 12 by 24 cutting mat. And then all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it down to size so that it fits on the cutting mat because this is actually going to be our stencil material that we are going to use today. And then once you have it on the mat, then I just took my X-Acto knife and a ruler and I cut it down to size so that it didn't have all that extra going through my cutting machine. And then once you have that done, let's go ahead and send it through your cutting machine and make sure you change your settings appropriately. Once you have your the design cut out, leave it on your cutting mat. You're gonna wanna weed it right on the cutting mat because remember this is freezer paper, so it's gonna be harder to put back together again. So do all your weeding right on the cutting mat. Then you're gonna take your press and seal and you're going to put it over the top of it. And you're gonna put and you're gonna use that press and seal kind of as your transfer tape. So just put it right on there and you'll be good to go from there. Use your squeegee and get all the little areas out and everything else and make sure you get some good adhesion. And I kind of left it on the roll until I was all the way to the end. And then I just tore it off. And then once again, went over everything and made sure it was pressed right. Now flip the mat over and pull the mat away from your stencil. And you can see because it's paper, some of the areas didn't stick because we're using press and seal, which was okay. And I just put those pieces up above it so I knew where they were going and stuff like that. So once you peel the mat away, you're then going to go ahead and put your items down on the mat and press it or and make sure that you have it where you want it. Now mine I did do a little more towards the bottom because I was putting the paws on separately to go from there. And then once you have it on there, you can slowly start peeling away your press and seal. Now, as you're slowly taking that press and seal away, you're gonna wanna add heat to it because that's the important thing about using the freezer paper. And I should have made note of that earlier. Make sure that when you're cutting it and you're doing the press and seal that the wax side is going towards the mat. So I actually, when I put my, um, my freezer paper on my cutting mat, the wax side of the paper went to the cutting mat itself. Okay, and then I arranged it. Now, if you have an iron or an easy press, that's probably gonna be a lot easier. If you ha only have a heat press, this will still work too. But one thing to note, if you have like a flat board to put this on, it would be a lot easier because you can see I have a, um, it hangs off the side of my heat press. And so the items were moving and they really, because we're using the press and seal, they really wanna be flat. So make sure if you're gonna use your um, a heat press that you put like a board and adjust your pressure accordingly, or you could use an iron. And what I did is I pulled the press and seal away to make sure I had things good in the, um, you can see it's um, off to the left there. And then I pressed down my heat on the heat press and you can see the items were sticking. The problem is, is that when I started moving it to the other side, they started coming up. So again, if you have a flat board or something, it'd be a lot easier. Or if you own an iron, which I don't even know that I own an iron anymore, um, use an iron or if you have an easy press, use something like that. Okay, so now that we have our freezer paper on the mat, I just took my X-Acto knife and I cut off the upper corner or the corners where I was gonna put the paw pads or the paw prints. And I'm just cutting out the extra ones because I did that. I, 
and I'm not gonna be so worried about putting heat on them. I'll just make sure I hold them down really well when I do them. But I'm just laying them out on my mat. And I actually used um, three sets because I have the three babies. And um, so I just kind of knew where on my mat I was gonna go with them. So I just used an X-Acto knife, cut them out, and then just put the paw pads, or got an idea of where I wanted my paw pads to go. Um, if you only want to use the one set, you can do that. You can use as many, you can use multiples. Um, the options is totally up to you on how you want to handle that. So once that's, um, once I have them laid out where I want, again, I'm using the outdoor acrylic paint and I just put some on the freezer paper and I took my brush and I'm now going to start dabbing. Now, if you run into an issue where some of the centers are coming up on you, push pins work really well. So you could use push pins. Um, again, this is one of those situations where, remember, you want to get good paint into the mat because you want to get them down into those um, crevices and stuff like that. Some people use like Flex Seal Black. Um, I find I have a lot more control over doing it this way with the brush. It may take me a little bit longer, but I think they look better and I have a lot more control over it. And then afterwards, I had some Flex Seal Clear that I just sealed the mat with. I just quickly sprayed one coat over it and went from there. So the option is yours um, and go from there. But like you, like you can see here, I was just holding down those center points. And if you are pretty good at painting, you don't even have to do it. And you can see here, I even used my X-Acto knife to hold it down, paint it around everything, and then went from there. And then I just pulled it off to the side and then called it done. So the option is totally yours, push bend, something like that. Um, but just make sure you're getting enough good paint into that mat to make sure that it looks really good. And the goal is to try and only go once. Um, there's a few areas where I had to add extra paint onto it, um, but it wasn't very many and stuff like that. So I just kept moving along, hold down my pieces and stuff. And again, if I would have had like an easy press or an iron and just would have ironed it right where it was, it would have been a lot easier, but I moved mine. And so because of the movement, even though I tried to keep it flat, I adjusted that freezer paper. So just keep that in mind. You really kind of want to leave it where you're going to um, do your painting, seal it, and then just start your painting, and then things wouldn't have shifted. So just things that I learned along the way. Um, the heat, yes, the heat press does work, but again, put it on a board so that when you move it, it stays flat on that board. So that is an option, and then just draw, adjust your pressure accordingly. So I'm just going to speed this up now so that you don't need to see, watch me sit here and paint. Um, but basically, I'm just adding paint on it and going from there, and that's all there is. And then once you have your mat the way you want it, um, you can see I ripped off a little, so I had to do a little extra S there to finish everything off. Once you have everything the way you want it, pull your mat material off, and then I just did the paws. Now, one important thing to remember 
is I, maybe I should have left my material on, but when I moved over with some paint, I sl slopped it over. So make sure if you're moving paint around that you're taking your paint to where you want it, want it go. And then the last thing I did was just um, paint it on my paw prints. If there was any spot that you had a little extra paint on, I just took my X-Acto knife and kind of scraped at it to get as much paint as I could get off of it. You could go over it with a brown or whatever, but again, it's just something to remember. Take your paint to where you want to go instead of traveling across the mat. But it's simple, fun, and easy project. And then once I was done, like I said, I just went through and just gave it a quick coat, a clear coat, and it was done. Enjoy, and we'll see you for the next uh, project DIY project that we do. Thank you. Bye-bye.